No, a map NASA sent to space is not dangerous to Earth. Let's be clear, the map to Earth that NASA sent into space aboard the Pioneer and Voyager spacecraft is not dangerous. It certainly hasn't made it a lot easier for aliens to attack Earth, it won't lead to extraterrestrials taking over our planet. And no one is rethinking this unintended foolish act. These claims, which have been seeping through the news media over the past 24 hours, are based on a misinterpretation of a story we published about this map in honor of the 40th anniversary of the Voyager launches. That story describes how 14 known pulsars can be used as galactic signposts to help aliens. As part of reporting that story, I interviewed my dad, Frank Drake, who created the map in 1971. During our conversation, we talked about how the pulsar map might fit into the current debate about deliberately sending messages to extraterrestrial civilizations. His answer, in those days, all the people I dealt with were optimists, and they thought the ETs would be friendly, Drake says. Nobody thought, even for a few seconds, about whether this might be a dangerous thing to do. All this statement means is that today's debate was not occurring in the 1970s. It's several cosmic leaps of logic between that and fearing this decision could prove to be disastrous, or that he's having reservations about the decision to guide aliens to Earth, or that he is suggesting the maps could be dangerous. When asked how he would respond to these statements, Drake says, the Pulsar map is not dangerous at all. It will likely never even be seen by extraterrestrials. Even then, it will be perhaps millions of years from now. The truth is that Drake isn't rethinking the safety of sending the Pulsar maps into deep space, he's not even opposed to the idea of sending targeted messages to ET once we know where they are, he just thinks it's not a good use of our available resources, which ought to be invested in detecting ET instead. Catherine Denning the York University anthropologist we interviewed for the original story, agrees that the map on its own is not a significant risk when it comes to humans announcing our presence. After all, we've been passively broadcasting radio signals from Earth for decades. These messages travel at the speed of light, wash over whatever is in their path, and are easily detected from afar. By contrast, the Voyager and Pioneer spacecraft aren't aimed at anything in particular, and detecting them from afar would require extraordinarily powerful radar systems and a heaping dose of luck. What's more, it will take them tens of thousands of years to brush by the next stars along their paths. Even then, the chances of the probes colliding with a planet or spaceship are so astronomically small they're essentially zero. While the concept of grafting a map for aliens may spark questions about much more targeted efforts to make contact, in reality, the Pioneer plaque and the Voyager golden record carrying the Pulsar map are not so much messages to the stars as messages to ourselves. The concept of NASA committing a foolish, dangerous act that might reap the wrath of a violent alien civilization is certainly compelling. It's also fictional, or in the jargon of today, fake news. Media organizations are already under attack from those who would deem anything disagreeable fake. We continually have to prove that facts are actually facts, that the truth needs telling, and that reason, pragmatism, and logical thought have places in civil discourse and in society. There certainly is a place for fantasy when talking about the cosmos and how we fit into it, but that place is not in news stories sold as factual. Literally, they're the sounds of interstellar space. And by measuring that sound wave, we could measure the density of the plasma and we're amazed to find out that we were in interstellar space. This is a historic milestone in the great journeys of exploration that have been undertaken by humankind. It is quite remarkable when you think about it, that far off now at ever increasing distances there's this little vehicle, two of them, which were built here uh, many years ago and launched uh, 36 years ago, now on a journey that will basically last for billions of years.
there's Voyager crossing over into interstellar space. It's the farthest thing we've ever sent anywhere. Voyager accomplished its mission so brilliantly and now goes on. This vehicle, which was, which is long past its expected uh, service life, is still sending messages. They're going beyond what we know in our neighborhood. We are boldly going where no one has gone before. It's as simple as that. This is awesome. The Voyager record, and really the Voyager mission, were conceived and executed uh, on behalf of all humankind. With the sounds and heartbeats and whale sounds and, and all the different languages of the world. Hello from the children of planet Earth. My name is Nick Sagan, I'm the son of Carl Sagan, and in the 70s I recorded Hello from the Children of Planet Earth for the Voyager Golden Record. Dad would be enormously proud, it would be a great celebration. It's an amazing accomplishment. Paz e felicidade a todos. I was selected to do Portuguese. It's hard to imagine aliens being able to decipher the Golden Record, but if they can decipher it, I like to think that they'll they'll take our message in a positive spirit. So we stand today at the threshold of a great epoch of infinite potential for discovery and exploration. This is not science fiction. This is better than science fiction. This is science reality. So Voyager, I bid you farewell. And thank you for being our ambassador. Job well done. You should write. You should maybe drop a postcard. Let us know how you're doing so we shouldn't worry. Congratulations to everyone on the Voyager team. But don't stop there. Many more worlds to explore. And thank you for expanding humankind's universe from Earth to interstellar space. Yeah,